joint press conference with the president of South Korea yesterday, President Biden addressed concerns about his age when it comes to his 2024 re-election bid. Here's some of what he had to say. With regard to age, uh, I can't even say, I guess how old I am, I can't even say the number. It doesn't, it doesn't register with me. And, uh, but the only thing I can say is that um, one of the things that people are going to find out, they're going to see a race, and they're going to judge whether or not I have it or don't have it. I respect them taking a hard look at it. I take a hard look at it as well. I took a hard look at it before I decided to run. And, uh, and I feel good. I feel excited about the prospects. And I think we're on the verge of really turning the corner in a way we haven't in a long time. I know you're tired of hearing me say we're at an inflection point, but we really are. What happens in the next two, three, four years is going to determine what the next three, four decades look like. And I have never been more optimistic in my life about the possibilities of the United States. Hey, you know what? He's got a daytime job. He's doing he, all right. He, he's, he's like, he, was, he's looking good. And I'll tell you what, there was a column in the Washington Post that yeah. really caught my eye by Mark Thiessen, uh, and, and this is what it says. If voters choose between Trump and Biden, Republicans won't like the results. Mm -hmm. And Mark writes in part this, quote, as he announces his reelection campaign, President Biden's extremely vulnerable, according to NBC News polling, with his disapproval at 54 percent, while a whopping 70 percent say they don't want him to run again. Now, with those numbers, his campaign should be politically dead on arrival. But here's the problem for Republicans, which... Uh, Marx, Marx, a conservative, of course, if he followed his writing. So he's talking to his own people, his own party. 60% of voters also don't want Donald Trump to run again. Americans are sending a clear message to both parties. They want new candidates to choose from in 2024. So what happens, and here's the key, what happens if voters are forced to choose between two candidates they don't want? A Wall Street Journal poll conducted by a pro-Trump super PAC pollster suggests the answer. Hmm. It found that among voters who disapprove of both Trump and Biden, Biden leads Trump by a massive 39 percentage points, 54 percent to 15 percent, 54 percent to 15 percent. As we say here every single morning, swing voters don't like Trump. And if they dislike Biden, they dislike Trump even more, Thiessen writes. Trump is effectively Biden's get out of jail free card. Trump already has cost the GOP two elections. Will it take a third for some to wake up to the fact that he is political kryptonite? Mike Barnacle, we talk about it every day. Mark Thiessen's columns dead on. Yeah, people may not be excited about Joe Biden. They may want somebody new. Maybe they want somebody who's not 80 plus. But they're going to take him when they go into the booth if the choice is between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. And this poll puts it in the most, again, what we say every day, this poll puts into a data point. You, I mean, Joe, you're right. I mean, on the basis of what we're looking at, Donald Trump versus Joe Biden, Joe Biden's going to beat Donald Trump. He's going to beat him like a drum, actually, because of one guy much younger than both men, much younger than Trump, much younger than Joe Biden, a guy by the name of Jack Smith. Uh, the special counsel, uh, and he is, I don't know how a guy goes to the country running for president of the United States who almost certainly will be carrying federal obstruction of justice charges against him, plus a couple of other charges, probably. But I don't know how you go to the country with that, with that hanging over your head. Forget all the other charges that he's, has to, that he's going to have to face, including the one in New York that's going on now. We'll see what happens with that. But I don't know how the weight of what he's done to this country in the past, federal indictments involved in it, how do you go to the country and win the presidency? I don't see it. Eddie, long campaign ahead. We should all be very wary of counting out Donald Trump. Hopefully everyone has learned their lesson. But this is not 2016 or even 2020. Joe Biden has a record to run on since the last presidential election. Former President Trump has staged an attempted coup against the government. The Roe versus Wade decision was overturned at the Supreme Court. There's so many dynamics are different now to go along with what Mike just said. Right. One indictment with perhaps more coming for the former president. Right. And then there's the, the overall unease about the state of our democracy, right, and the actors that have placed us in that position. So, look, I think a head-to-head -head battle between Biden and Trump, we should put 
our bets on Biden, I think, because of the general worry. But we don't know if Trump is going to make it out of that primary, given all of, I mean, some people do, uh, given, all the, given all the weight, the legal troubles he's in. But I also think we need to note that there's a kind of generational unease here. I mean, these are baby, you know, the baby boomers just won't move out of the way. You know, the folks before them won't move out of the way. And these young folk, as we see in Tennessee and Wisconsin and across the country, are chomping at the bit to try to figure out a different way in which we can go about being American, being in this country. Yeah, seems. and poll after poll shows that there is an unease about the age of both candidates. Right. And, and it's not just President Biden. It's, it's Donald Trump, who's only a few years younger. And, and look, the White House, they know the age is an issue in this campaign. But again... The, they point to Trump as well and his, at times, shall we say, erratic uh, behavior. But, Carlos, I also want to let's get back to that poll for a second about this idea of voters who disapprove of both candidates who aren't thrilled. Um, it's easy to sort of dismiss that, like, oh, who cares? But that actually does matter. Let's go back to 2016 for a second. There was a swath of voters in 2016 who didn't really like either Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. Both candidates had pretty high unfavorability numbers. But yet, on Election Day, the majority of the voters who didn't like both broke for Trump, and that sort of made a difference. Uh, and in this case, it seems like the majority of the voters who don't like either are going to break pretty hard for Biden. And it also, that poll says to me, considering how few of them would vote for Trump, it speaks to the intensity of that dislike for Trump. So those voters probably aren't going to change their minds. That's right, Jonathan. And this theory has been tested twice now with Trump and Biden, mm -hmm. because of course we have the 2020 election, but in 2022, what is typically a referendum on the president, Donald Trump decided to insert himself and to make the election a choice between him and Joe Biden. Again, especially in a lot of swing states and in all of those swing states and in, even in some of those congressional swing districts, uh, the Biden and his candidates ended up beating Trump and his candidates. So we know what this looks like. Now, I will say with so many Americans dissatisfied with the two main choices, what appears are going to be the two main choices, we do have to watch for third-party candidacies, not because they're necessarily going to win, but could a third-party candidate garner enough votes mm -hmm. to spoil the election for one candidate or the other? That's something to watch. I could see young people saying, you know what, enough of these two guys, we're going to choose someone else. I can see Hispanic voters and others uh, looking for that third option.